Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord of potent rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God of many folk and rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God. Omnipotent reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord God. Omnipotent reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you would never change, ancient of days. As old as you are, as old as you are, you would never change ancient of days, ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you never change be lifted up be lifted up hold on be lifted up for you are Righteous and all of thee, O Lord, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up. Oh Lord, be lifted up, for you are holy, righteous and holy, oh Lord. Let's be going to bless the Lord tonight. Let's be going to lift up the name of Jesus. Let's worship his name. Father, we want to bless him. your name tonight. We I want to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Your name. We magnify your name because your name. you are worthy. Are holy. We worship you, Father. We give you the praise. There's we no give one like you the you. glory. There's we no give you the honor. To you. None is like equal. Like none is compared unto you. Like Lord of Lord. You are awesome. You are, are faithful. You are able. Our shield, our buckler, our hard grip, our strong tower. We bless your holy name. Marvelous. We magnify your name, for you are worthy. 
We praise you, Father. We bless your holy name, our shield, our you, Lord. Lord. We bless you for who we you are. The greater you, than the greatest, you are higher you, Lord, than the highest. You are worthy. You are be thou exalted and be thou glorified. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, awesome. we honor your name. You are beautiful we worship for you, Father, because you are faithful. We Thank bless you your name your because you are worthy. We give Thank you, you the praise goodness. and the glory and Thank the honor. You mercy. Blessed be the glory, name of the Lord. Adoration, Father, we worship you tonight. Uh, Let all praise and all perfect. glory go back to you. Like Blessed be your holy name. Thank you that we know For you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to be going to thank God for tonight. Let's appreciate for another time coming together, another Bible study. Come here this time, say, Father, have your way. Take full preeminence. Let's lift up tonight, Father. Amen. We dedicate tonight over to you. It will not be fleshly. It will not be carnal. It will not be in our five senses. It will not be out of duty, out of routine. But Lord, take full preeminence tonight. Take over tonight. Take over tonight. We yield mm. ourselves to you, you as living sacrifices. Have your way tonight. In Take our the eminence tonight. To Have your way, Father. Breathe hey, over this time. May flesh die that your glory today. will be seen. In the mighty name here, of Jesus. Jesus. Let your no, name, your name tonight. alone be glorified. Blessed we'll be your name forever. You. We praise you, we, we honor you, we worship you. Uh, uh, Thank uh, you, Father. Uh, we bless your you holy name. We magnify your name. Let all glory, glory and all praise go back to you. Thank you, King we of glory. All glory all honor, For in all Jesus' you. mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to rededicate our lives, ask for God's mercy, our family. We want to say, Father, tonight, as we go into this Bible study, let the blood run through us and cleanse and purge our lives and let there be complete total sanctification by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's cry to him, my father, in the and, name uh, of Jesus we tonight. We this Bible study of the night into your hands. To you, breathe. Let breathe the blood run in our control. system, in our hearts, in our lives. Take let there be purging. Let there be mouth, cleansing ear, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Heart. In the mighty Let everything name of be Jesus, according to your will. Take over tonight by the power the of the Holy Ghost. I pray in that the mighty name you. of Jesus. Kali kato la basata yama tele kata yama. In the name of Jesus. Kali kata la bayan tele baya. In the mighty name of Jesus. Purify, Father. In the name of Jesus. Mikotoloboshi Katalaba by the power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to also pray once again and ask for God and say, Father. Even tonight, as we are gathered tonight, breathe over this time and cause this time. Let the presence and the power of God, let the presence and the power of God take full preeminence over this time. Let's begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, take over. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Katala Bayan Telebeya, in the name of Jesus, she Katala Bayan Telebeya, Nikasotoli Katala Baya, blessed be your holy name. Kaloba Sata, let the presence of the Holy Ghost take full preeminence. Take over, take over, take over, take over, take over tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, take over tonight, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, we hand over tonight to you. 
Mali kato la ka da ba sa ta la ba ya. In the mighty name of Jesus, mi ko lo bo shi ka la ba ya in the name of Jesus, mi ka ta la ba ya. Ka lo bo sha ka ta la ba ya in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Ghost. Take over tonight, take over tonight. We yield, we commit tonight, Father, to you. Reign supreme by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mikala basha talabaya. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wherever you are, I want you to begin to pray right now. Commit others and say, Father, all members, wherever they are, those coming from work, those who are busy, those who are forgotten, those who are discouraged, those who are sleeping, those something happened, they cannot call in, Father, encounter them, touch them, and bring them speedily. Let's begin to pray. My Father, my Father. In the name of Jesus, we cry to you, Mikatola Basata Labaya. The Lord, by the Spirit of God, Mikata Labaya. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, Kotala Basata Yande, touch everyone. Touch everyone, Makola Basata Labaya. In the name of Jesus, Mikola Basata Labaya. Touch everyone, Father, wherever they are. Minister unto them and remind them and bring them over in a supernatural way by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for tonight's gathering. Let it be done to your glory and to your praise. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want also pray once again and begin to command. Open heaven over tonight's Bible study. Let the heavens open over tonight's Bible study. Let's begin to pray. My Father, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you, Father God, for open heaven. Open heaven, open heaven, open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name over tonight's Bible study, let there be open heaven. Father, let the heavens be open over our homes, wherever someone is, whether it be at war or home or at work or some other location, anywhere, let the heavens be open. Let the power of God take over. Let every location become a place of power, of fire, of encounter, of divine intervention, divine turnaround, transformation power by the Holy Ghost, Fire of God, finger of God, locate everybody wherever they are. Let the hand of God begin to walk in our hearts, in our lives, in a supernatural way. We bless your name forever. We give you the praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We honor you, Father. We worship you. Take all the praise, Father. Do that which only you can do. In the name that is above every other name, Mali Katadabaya Katalabaya, we bless your name forever. We give you the praise. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Do that which only you can do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah. I want you to begin to pray and lift everyone, everyone tonight, a lot today, and open the eyes of every one of us to what we want to talk about tonight. Open our eyes like never before. Let's begin to pray, Father, according to Ephesians 1, verse 18, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Open our eyes, open our eyes, my father, my father, open our eyes supernaturally by the spirit of God, open our eyes, Jesus, open our eyes, Holy Ghost, open our eyes, 
Reveal yourself to us by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Reveal yourself tonight as we delve into the word. Open our eyes, ancient of days. Malikatalabaya, Makola Basatalabaya. In the mighty name of Jesus, open our eyes. My father, my father. Nali Katola Mandali Kalabaya. Open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Open our eyes. My father, my father, tonight. Nikota Dabasha Talabaya. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Rikatola Basata Labaya. Open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Open our eyes. Malikatola Baya. Makatola Boshikatola Baya. Open our eyes. By the Spirit of God, reveal yourself unto us tonight like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, Kali Katoloboya, in the name that is above every other name, open our eyes, my Father, my Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wherever you are, I want you to pray tonight and begin to lift everyone and say, Father, tonight, everyone that is calling tonight, may the hand of God locate every challenge or problem in their life. Command the healing balm of Gilead, the power of God to intervene in every situation. Let's pray tonight, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus tonight, everyone, wherever they are, let the hand of God locate them. Let the power of God locate them. Let them encounter and experience the power of God like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus tonight, let the finger of God come down into every life, into every home, into every location. Let the presence of God do that which only you can do. In the name of Jesus tonight, breathe into our lives by your spirit tonight. Locate everyone, do the impossible and the supernatural. Touch everyone, Father God. May the Holy Ghost cause hearts and life to be touched tonight in a supernatural way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, ancient of days. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray wherever you are once again. Begin to call God. Say, Father, I am here tonight. Remember me, visit me in a special way. Somebody pray, Father, I am here in my home or workplace, wherever you are. Father, visit somebody in a special way. They need an encounter with you. They need a divine intervention. Visit somebody in a special way like never before. In the matchless name of Jesus, visit somebody by the power of the Holy Ghost. Visit somebody tonight in the name that is above every other name. Yes, Father, we ask you in a supernatural way. Visit somebody. Let there be miracles, signs, and wonders. Let the power of God go into action. Let the glory of God be revealed tonight. Let mighty things happen tonight. Let yokes be broken, let burdens be lifted up, let there be liberty, let there be deliverance, divine intervention, turn around, sudden surprises, visit me, visit somebody tonight like never before, every spoken word, let it become a reality tonight, 
In the matchless name of Jesus, let somebody's issue, trial, challenge, turbulence, problem, failure, shame, pain, sickness, and disease, let them come to an end tonight by the Spirit of God. Bless your name. We honor you, Father. We give you the praise and the glory, Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Fill my cup long. I lift it up long. Come on, quench the thirst of my soul. Bread of heaven. Fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me all. Fill my cup, fill my cup long. I lift it up long. Come on, quench the facet of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me all. Let's turn that to prayer. Say, Father, fill us tonight. Fill my cup. Let's pray tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, fill my cup. Lord, I fill my cup. Lord, I am empty. I am dry. Lord, fill my cup. Fill my cup tonight. Fill my cup tonight. Fill me, Father. Let me run over. Let my cup run over. In the name of Jesus, fill us tonight. Fill us tonight. Flood the Zoom line wherever somebody's with fire that will cause them never to be the same again. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for tonight. Thank you. We cover this time in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Take over this time. I command the atmosphere everywhere. Anybody Amen. is anyone is located. I command like Moses and God speak to Moses. Let them have a holy ground. A power place, whether at work or home or anywhere they listen right now, may the environment be electrocuted, empowered by divine impartation by the Holy Ghost. Let somebody never be the same. Speak and teach us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you. You're all welcome tonight. Wherever you are placed, this is Bible study. You can unmute your phone, and so we can also discuss. And let's have a wonderful Bible study so you can unmute your phone because it's Bible study time. I'm looking at a very, we have been looking at evangelism to God be the glory. Last Saturday we went out on evangelism to, and being a blessing to the people in the community around the church. Trusting God that next month will be bigger and better and much more resourceful. But today we want to look at evangelism by fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you all have the notes on your phone? Mm -hmm. We want to look at evangelism by fire. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Verse 9 says, Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word is in my heart. As a burning fire shot up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing that I could not stay. Praise the Lord. So Jeremiah is saying something interesting. I didn't want to talk or say anything about the gospel or share something, but this word in me is like fire is burning in my heart. My spirit man is tearing so much. I need to say something. Hallelujah. My spirit man is burning so hard. I got to say something else. I will explode. Let's go down to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 
So if First Corinthians chapter nine and verse sixteen. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse sixteen says, "For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel." This is Paul writing to the church. It was said. Set right into the folks in corn, but now it's for all of us. Paul says, if I don't preach the gospel, I am under a serious cause. So if we don't win souls for the Lord, cause is already available. The more you go in your spiritual life, you have to preach the gospel. Paul says, if I don't preach the gospel, woe is unto me. Uh, Amos chapter 6 and verse 1, he said, woe unto them that are east in Zion. That means if I don't preach the gospel, there is also a there is a major consequence of a cost not to preach the gospel. We have to, we must, we must make time, no matter how busy we are. Um, Acts chapter 26. If you're there, Acts chapter 26, verse 18 and 19. Please, I'm seeing a lot of you, you have mute your phone. I will, very soon, I want all of us to be part of it. It's Bible study, so please unmute your phone so we can hear you contribute. This is Bible study. Acts chapter 26 and verse 18 and 19. To open their, their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin, and inheritance amongst them that are sanctified by faith that is in him. Verse 19, wherefore upon, wherefore, where, where upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to unto this heavenly vision. Praise the Lord. Praise be the Lord. Please, I, can we please, can we all please unlock, unmute our phone play? This is Bible story. We got to contribute now. If you look through your notes, the definition of evangelism is preaching, look at your note, please, preaching the salvation of Jesus Christ. You see there, it is underlined. That means there are other kinds of salvation. Salvation of another prophet. Salvation of a denomination salvation of a preacher but evangelism is what preaching salvation of who jesus that means the only salvation that takes you to heaven is only through jesus praise the lord Hallelujah. only through jesus i have realized people don't want to tell unbelievers that the only way to heaven is through Jesus. They have to know it. If we don't tell them, means we are not telling them the truth. The only way you can make it to heaven is through Jesus. So let's go back again. Evangelism was preaching the salvation of Jesus Christ to the unsaved to bring them from darkness into his marvelous light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. If you have your Bible, let's go there quickly. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. 13 says, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So Jesus is taking us. You, whenever you go on evangelism, you are taking somebody from darkness into the kingdom of Jesus, not of the kingdom of a church. You can go into another church, but the church does not belong to Jesus. Why? Because many people only promote denomination. And I tell you, I said early on, denomination is not the gospel. But the real gospel is only focused about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Now, evangelism by fire involves three very powerful things. Normally when you win souls, you preach the gospel, ABC, that's it. But now, evangelism, not by evangelism by talking, not evangelism by, poli by, by politics. No, no, no. 
not evangelism by propaganda, not evangelism by black to blacks, whites to white, Hispanic to, no, no. Evangelism by fire involves three powerful things. It involves spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. holiness, and aggressive daily evangelism. You see there? Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, Anytime yeah. a church wants to go by evangelism and fire, they have to be spiritual warfare. In other words, you're going to be confronting demonic powers. It is not, you cannot just walk in and snatch people out. David said one time, Psalm 144 verse 1 says, He maketh my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then Christ says in Matthew 11, 12, For the days of John the Baptist up to now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. You see there? So for you to be ev do evangelism by fire, you must engage warfare. With who? The kingdom of darkness. Praise the Lord. We mm -hmm. have to confront them. Ephesians 6, 12, principality, powers, etc. It also involves holiness. You cannot do evangelism by fire if you're not living a holy life. You're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. When you go to work, they're watching you. In school, whatever you're doing in the house, mm -hmm. and that is even more interesting. In your own family, wherever they are, they know, if you, they know you that you are, they know you when you are very small. So holiness is so much needed for them by the way you live your life to get their attention. That's another way. But wherever you go, evangelism by fire also demands holiness. Praise the Lord. Holiness mm -hmm. is necessary. You cannot do evangelism by fire by evangelism and living in sin. People will not take you serious. Why should I be smoking and telling somebody to be born again, committing adultery, lying, cheating, gossip, all the trash, I can't evangelize well. So it involves spiritual warfare, holiness, and what? Aggressive evangelism means snatching people. I think uh, Jude 1 from the 3 says, many will be snatched out of the fire. Luke 19.10 says, he came to seek and save that which was lost. So we have to be engaging in getting people out. Now, many are involved are interested in soul healing, but their determination is not long lasting or an unstoppable means they're excited, they want to win souls, they want to go out, but they don't have time. The desire is only for a short time, a only first one year, and then they die out. I pray by the grace of God, we will not be like battery in a car where when the, the electrolyte or the acid dies, we have no power. Our fire for evangelism should stay. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, in Luke 10, 19, I quoted it, Mark 16, 15, talk about go, you see what go, he didn't say stay, what did he say? Go, I'm not communicating, the word here, he said what? Go, praise the Lord, he did not say stay, he said what? Go, so if I am not going, you are not going, we are under a big trouble, remember what? Paul said in, my, in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, he says, Woe, bitter cause, I'm under a cause if I'm not preaching. By my lifestyle, by warfare, and by snatching many people from darkness to light. So look at your notes again. When we relax and don't get bothered about evangelism, this is known as what? Cold evangelism. Praise the Lord. No, I don't have time. I'm busy. I got two jobs. It's only for the, the leaders and the pastors or somebody else. No, evangelism is for everybody. Let's go down to real talk now. Signs of cold evangelism. Number one is what? If you're there, please unlock, please unmute your, your, your except your background is noisy. That's fine. Please, let's contribute. Signs of cold evangelism. What is point number one, Sister Jan? Christians treating evangelism with levity. Christians treating evangelism with levity. Well, anybody, what does that mean? Making fun of something that's not um, that's not a joke and um, yeah. not taking it seriously. Okay. So the word levity means I'm not taking it serious. So now. Christians are treating evangelism like it is not what? Serious. It's not important. 
So question, is evangelism important? Yes. Is it very important? Yes. So if it is very important when people don't go by it, then we are involved in cold evangelism. Right, now Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 29 and 30. See, very interestingly, Matthew 20, 21, verse 29 and 30. If you're there, you can read if, you have, if you're there. Matthew 21, verse 29 and 30. Okay. The, the other lacuna, I think your, 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 your speaker is not, is not unmuted, sir, except you are busy. Go ahead, sir, John. Okay, 20, verse 29. Yes. I, okay, I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Uh-huh. Okay, in 30, 31. 30. Mm -hmm. 30. Okay. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Okay. So you see what happened when, when there was an instruction? The first one said, I'm not going to go, but he changed his mind and then he went. Yeah. He realized, I cannot take evangelism for joke. But the other one said, I am going to go. Give me the track, give me whatever I want to preach. And he did not. You see there? Mm -hmm. so every single in the church, there are people who take evangelism for love. It means it doesn't, it's not a big deal. I'm not the only one that should evangelize. So the question is that, should we all evangelize? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, we should be evangelizing. Now, point number two, saints are remorseful without stepping out to win souls. In other words, I feel like, oh my God, people should be leaving. We must be reaching out, but I don't have this passion. This fire in me is not there. It doesn't bother me. Now, if you don't have compassion for souls, it is difficult to talk to somebody about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think one of the I want to encourage some, everyone, if you develop the attitude to be praying for unbelievers, consistently all the time praying for unbelievers, to be born again, the passion for soul willing will become part of you every single day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at point number three. Preaching what? What's number three? Uh, what three is uh, preaching. Compromising. Uh, to compromising message to the so preaching preaching a compromising message to the dying mm -hmm. world you see mm -hmm. there dying tell world, what, yeah. what does that mean you are preaching a compromising message to the dying world let somebody contribute what does that mean it means you are not preaching the gospel of jesus you you are trying to do it wishy-washy and uh, maybe mm -hmm. because you don't want people to be offended. Yeah, okay. to tell the whole truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody want to say anything? But I don't want to say anything, sir. If it's, if it's okay with you. No, it's the same thing he said, I want to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so now let me ask a question. If I'm preaching a compromising message, let me say this. How many have heard this message which says, come to Jesus and everything is going to be all right? Is it right or wrong? Uh, wrong. Uh, wrong. Wrong. Now, many years ago when I wasn't safe, I was a Bob Marley fan. I heard him sing it was something like whatever, no woman, no, everything is gonna be all right. He was just Thank singing you. to make money out of people, and in less in less than two years he was dead. Everything was not all right. <laughs> you cannot preach because when you got born again, let's be frank. Do you know when you got born again? The kingdom of darkness will come after you. You're having a lot of trouble, attacks, challenges. Am I right or wrong? Right. So it is not a right. But now let's look at the compromising part. You know, you can still smoke and still come to church. Afterwards, God will change you when he wants. Have you heard that gospel before? No, you just come. You can be a lesbian. You can be a gay. God understands. Afterwards, he knows you are struggling. 
And so people come to church and they will stay in church for a long time, gay, lesbian, adulterers, racketeers, and just do whatever they can do, caught in bestiality, masturbation, and they're in the church, in the choir, in the prayer team, everywhere. And that's why the church in America is extremely weak because sin has flooded the church to fall now. My brother, his grace is sufficient, but grace is not a license to sin. I'm not communicating. Yes. Grace is the ability to overcome sin. Romans 6, for this is, what? For sin should not have dominion over me. We are no more under the law. We are under grace. So we should not preach compromising messages. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Point yeah. number four, saints in Christ who hide yeah. what? Their yeah. internal who hide their internal identity. They hide their internal identities. What does that mean? Let's talk. It's Bible study. What does it mean? I'm born again, but I'm hiding my eternal identity. Any idea? Hiding you real you, who you actually are. Okay, who oh, you actually are. Okay, it's, oh, that's a good idea. Some they else can shame. get their own. They are shame. They, are, they don't want people to know that they are born again. Simple as H O D. You many. Uh, let's be frank. Have you been to some job where the Christian is there? Nobody knows they are born again till they leave the company. Yes, yeah. I have seen it everywhere. They talk. They curse like anybody. They yeah. gossip like anybody. They talk trash like anybody. They even go to company parties. They're dancing in the middle of the floor and nobody knows their boy, but Sunday they're singing in the choir. Too bad. So, I'm sorry, <coughs> I wanted to ask question, but maybe. Yes, ma, please, ma. So when somebody is doing all that, what is different, you know, between unbeliever and uh, the same person? Because we are still saying they don't want people to know that they mm -hmm. are born again. So what uh -huh. differentiates you if you cannot, if there is no any difference between you and unbeliever. You still claim that you are born again. I don't so look, look, look at your notes, my sister, sister Juliana. Signs of cold evangelism. That means you are, you are now compromising, living in sin with them. And most of those people is what they say, one saved is always saved. Is that true or false? False. Yes. It is false. You need to Since walk I was out. Seen. Uh, uh, excuse uh, me, excuse me. Question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Sin is always sin, right? Yes. So what, what are we saying is, is false? No, it's once saved is always saved. Oh, no, no. Okay, true okay, I get it. False. It's false. It's false. <laughs> okay, I thought I thought I thought you <laughs> Okay, okay, I got it's false. Yeah. Okay, so most time people say, "Well, I'm born again." Listen carefully. When you have an insurance for your car, you understand me, and you have an accident, you know that oh, they will they will they will get me another car. Is that so? Even mm. it's full coverage. Many people think salvation is what insurance. Oh, God, understand? No. You need to be light in darkness. Your identity must be seen. Let me say this. Many times when you are in some place, place, especially work, people get born again by the life you live in front of them. Is that so? Mm -hmm. In your heart, in, in your family where they know you when you were young, they know how bad you were. Now you are born again. Born again makes no difference to them, but your character will change them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, your lifestyle speaks even volumes than those talking. All right. Point number five. Sin and, and worldliness. Worldliness what? Exists in most churches. Sin and worldliness exist in most churches. Is that true or false? True. true. It's true. <laughs> Let's give an example of some worldliness or sin in churches today. Gossiping. Gossiping is number one. It's everywhere. Everywhere, even in the pulpit. Gossiping. Any, any other person? Lying. Lying. Everywhere, even in the pulpit. Any more? Let's, co let's contribute. Discrimination. Discrimination is everywhere, even in the pulpit. <laughs> 
Am I communicating? Is everywhere? Anyone? Anyone again? Envy. Envy. Everywhere, including the pulpit. So, in a nutshell, when all these things are around, it 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 causes evangelism to become cold. So now we call it cold evangelism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go because of time. Now it's self-explanatory. Number six, Christians pray more about personal and material blessing than the unsaved. Is do you see that today in the church? Yes. It's yeah. everywhere. You go to prayer meetings, 99.9% .9 is about bless me, bless me, and kill all the enemies. Minister, you hear about praying for souls, souls, people to be born again, for revival. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We spend too much time about bless me. It is very important to pray about house, car, blessing, marriage, children, immigration. They're all important. But they are less important to salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me ask a question. What is the number one important um what do you call, how I say it? What is the number one important um gift that God has for all of us? Eternal life. Eternal life. Right. Eternal life. And yeah. What, what is the other name for eternal life? Salvation. Salvation. Huh? Salvation. 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 So we must be praying more about salvation of souls. We need to pray about house, car, healing, get corona to leave. It's very important. We must do that. But let's pray more about souls, revival, holiness, godliness in the government. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Praise the Lord. Um, my oh. uncle, we shall all this pastor have been listening to you all from the beginning to the end now, till now. I think it is hard, whether called evangelism or not, or uh, the coldness towards what you're doing. You know, um, there is a place they said in the Bible, they said a bridegroom went to call people and they are like, I'm, I'm busy. I'm so busy. Um, I have a, I have a, I have a sheep to tend to. I have this to do, you know. In America, it is like that. Everybody is busy. I know COVID nineteen is uh, is killing people. People are dying here and there, but even other people are very busy. Like now, I know that my school has started. I'm teaching. I'm teaching again, and then my eleven o'clock prayer that I normally do. I don't even have time for it. It's so hard because I want to really get the work ready to teach my students the next day. So if you can map out time to pray to God, you know, seek his face, humble yourself, have time to read your Bible, have time to pray. The more you come to God, the more you will receive the Holy, the Holy Spirit, because everything starts with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, if man. God is too far away from you, there is no way, because evangelism starts with you before you can even preach others. It starts with you. If you're too far away from God, you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You, uh, you will, you, before you know it, you're walking towards that darkness. Mm. But if you're closer to God, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit leads you to holiness and to achievement. The Bible tells us, if you read the New Testament, you know, the darkness and light, flesh and spirit. So always talking about flesh and spirit. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came so that you will receive the Holy Spirit. How do you receive that salvation? If you are empty, you are an empty barrel. Mm. There is nothing in you. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you hear the voice of God and walk in holiness. The Holy Spirit can tell you, walk away from this trouble. Read your Bible. Do this. You find yourself, that righteousness following you. Amen. Okay? So we need the Holy Spirit in us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we all get it carefully. One of the reasons why cold evangelism exists because the Holy Ghost is... I, I want to say the Holy Ghost have left over 90% of the church today. Uh, we are running ministry like Walmart. We are running ministry like the world. We forget the Lord of the harvest that is the Holy Spirit that helps evangelism ministry to be successful. We need the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number seven, the church becomes more... You Listen carefully now. The church becomes what? More uh, humanitarian as opposed to soul winning. As opposed to as soul winning. Opposed to soul winning. To Who can tell me what, what does that mean? Um, 
take, take for example. Take that again, Pastor. I didn't get you clear. It should be on your notes, Sister Juliana. <laughs> okay, point number seven. The church becomes more humanitarian as opposed to soul winning or evangelism. Yeah. Um, can, can, I, can I say something? Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, the idea is that, uh, like we do, uh, we give out a uh, gift to people who are in need. And there are people who build hospitals, who build, uh, give uh, social amenities. But uh, they neglect the soul of these people. So uh, the, the soul is more important. Humanitarian. Uh, it's good also, there's nothing wrong about it, but mm. the soul of the people we are trying to take care of is more important than what we give them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, do, do you understand what that is? For example, we are giving out food this past Saturday. At the same time, we put work inside of them, tracks. Why do we put tracks inside there? Because Evangelic, we are concerned about them making heaven. That means they will eat the food, get the benefit, and still go to hell at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is good to have schools, medical facilities. All of them are very important, but we need, people need to be born again, or else they will have all the benefits and land in hell and say, we didn't even know it was wrong. And the church, we need to, we, are, we must have a balance. We must do more, we must do humanitarian things, but now winning souls to be born again must be of the number one priority. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, point Hallelujah. number eight. Look at look at number eight in your notes. Less laborers and more what? More motivational speakers. Anybody can elaborate, please. The, the, the floor is open. Less laborers and more motivational speakers. Most pastors go ahead sir go ahead sir most pastors are motivational speakers mm -hmm. and they're not uh, they're not winning souls to the kingdom okay so uh i think uh, that's that's where i understand this one okay that's that's great yeah but the the laborers are the ones who are supposed to go out mm-hmm and teach about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and win their soul and bring them to Christ. Okay. But the uh, motivational speakers, all they do is to tell people how to become rich, mm -hmm. how to get on in life, uh -huh. uh, how to improve your education and your businesses and all those things. So that's what they teach. They don't teach about Christ. Christ is secondary to them. Uh, what we what we gain in this world, who we are in this world, is more important to them than Christ. Hallelujah. Um, mm -hmm. this, 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 I want to I want I want to I want to ask a question. What is the difference between laborers and workers in the vineyard? Any difference? Laborers and workers. And we live similar. on the house in the, in the house of God. Okay, what are you going to say? I said they are almost similar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's almost, almost similar. Almost almost similar. Almost similar. Laborers yeah, and um, workers. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go into secular. Um, but I'm going works in a hospital. I can say laborers. Clock, I'm not sure, sir. Yeah. You work, you work in a hospital. You clock in and clock out. Not so, sir. I do. Good. Now, the word laborers, if you look at the Greek mean, the word laborers, this is somebody that is working without clocking, clock out time, number one. Number two, he does not have any kind of say, I am going to a hospital to work. That's my workplace. He can be diverted to go another location with this. Because the same boss is telling him, go this way, go this way. He has no special this the defined direction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The laborer is like somebody carry a big load on the head. Labor. 
heavy load he carries so much responsibility while the worker has other workers around to spread the workload in the workplace praise the lord the same rule is in the kingdom jesus wants more laborers or else we will all be engaged in cold evangelism praise the lord it is very deep, like such an impression early on in the in this end time. Laborers are few. If you go look at the scripture in, in Matthew 9, 37, it says the, the harvest is white, white, but white. The laborers are few. It didn't say the workers are few. They can clock in and clock out. But the laborers, those who say, My father's work is my life. I am going the extra mile. I pray the Lord will help us in this Amen. end time to win souls and depopulate hell in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go down because of time. What produces evangelism by fire? Number one is that saints living what? By Amen. godly by what? Godly example. We all know that. So the first thing, if you want to be a channel or you want to demonstrate evangelism by fire, your life must be speaking. You must live by example. Walk, school, church, family, wherever you go. Question number one. Are all of us doing 100% right in this area? And the answer is what? No. No. We all have to work in this area and grow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So who much is given, much is expected. We, God is expecting us to be, to have godly examples wherever we go. Ephesians 5, somebody read Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Anybody can read, please, if you're there. Ephesians 5. Verse 8. 8. It says... For ye were sometimes darkness. Okay. But now are ye light mm -hmm. and children uh, and in the Lord. Okay. Walk as children of light. So you say that you used to be in darkness, but now you're in light. Just walk as children of what? Light. light. That means maintain godly example. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We got to do that. I know we struggle here and there, but we must inc we must grow. Never be satisfied with your level. Number two, consistent intercession and spiritual warfare are paramount. Both of them, two kinds of prayer. Intercession means praying for others. Are you all with me? Yeah. Yes. Spiritual warfare also includes praying for others, but now you are confronting demonic powers. This is the prayer that many people don't know how to do in the church, even in America, especially. Spiritual warfare. I don't mean killing your, your mother-in-law, killing. No, just put that aside. I'm talking about warfare. <laughs> Confronting the demonic powers that control America, that control Michigan, that control your area, your job, your boss. There are demons behind the president, those in authority, the Congress, the Supreme Court, all of them. They are all of, they are all manipulated by demons. Let's be frank. We have to rise up into warfare. We need to do that, or else they will be used by the devil to fight for all kind of demonic things, and they will all end up in hell. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We need to rise into warfare and pray for them. Well, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I said it early on. In in. There is no Democrat heaven. There is no Republican heaven. There is only one heaven. The only way to heaven is through who? Jesus Christ. So Christ. We, are, we must stay on the Lord's side. Even in this election, let us stay on the Lord's side. Take our Bible and say, Father, what is the Bible say? And let the Bible tell us what to do. But when it comes to warfare and intercession, we must pray only what the Bible says, not what we think. When we do that, we are engaging in what? Evangelism by fire. Praise the Lord. Look at, look at Hebrews 7.25. Somebody look at e Hebrews 7.25. Very important scripture. I like the scripture. It has changed my life. 
Hebrews 7, 25. Somebody read, please. Hebrews 7, 25. 7, 25. It said, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. You see there, Jesus has died, rose, went to heaven, but now he's still interceding for us. Do you see what I'm saying? While me and you, down here, we go to work, go to school, business, shop, etc. But we are neglected and we remember we have a role model. Jesus is our perfect example. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We must mimic him 100%. He's every, he's praying nonstop for us and for the same, for unbelievers. Let's do the same thing. Now, point number three, understanding God's heartbeat for what? God's uh, heartbeat. heartbeat. Now, Evangelism is evangelism. God's heartbeat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me ask, let me say one thing. We all need salvation. When you go to heaven, one of the major crowns you're going to receive is this crown called the crown regarding evangelism. Let's read Proverbs 11 and verse 30. Somebody read. That is, let's somebody read apart from daddy. Uh Sister Florence, are you there? You can read Proverbs 11 30, man. Okay, sir. Proverbs 11, verse 30, man. Okay, sir. Proverbs 11. Verse 30. Okay. Come on. 11, verse 30. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Righteous is a tree of uh -huh. life, and he that winneth so winneth soul is white. So it says, "He that winneth soul is what white." Wise. So the more you win soul, you become what wise. You wise. become wise, or you become wiser. So you see there. God is looking for people to depopulate hell. We got to do that every single day. Amen. All right. Amen. Point number four, Christians spending more time in God's presence every day. We, this is very important. Spending time in God's presence. It doesn't mean you have to be in a church building to spend time in God's presence. Yeah. You have to, you must understand that God is in you, around you, with you, for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's in you. Your body is the temple of God. That was why sin is not working with the Holy Ghost. There are two different <coughs> territories. Sin is over here. The Holy Ghost over. They don't come together. Sin, holiness, they're not together. But you must carry the presence of God wherever you go. A mm. preacher said one time he was in the airport mm. and sitting down and the woman next to him said, sir, excuse me, sir, can I talk to you, please? Pray for me. I'm committing adultery with my so and so and so. He did not even talk to the woman. The woman began to confess her sin. In other words, when you carry God's presence, it can cause somebody to be convicted. If you're coming, somebody say, ah, don't talk or don't say it. Ah, you are gossiping. Don't do that. Because the Holy Ghost in you, because somebody not to lie, because somebody to hide their whiskey when they say, ah, hide the whiskey, he's coming. He doesn't like beer and Heineken. Hide it. Turn off the world, the music. Because light and darkness have nothing in common. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We must carry God's presence everywhere we go. Um, point number five. More laborers and soul winners responding to evangelism. We mentioned that early on. We need more laborers. Praise the Lord. More mm -hmm. laborers. Um, let's go to Mark chapter 6 and verse 12. Somebody go there quickly. Mark, Sister John, can you go there? Mark 6 and verse, verse 12. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. they, went, and they went out. Go, okay, go ahead, go ahead, sir. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Mm-hmm. 
And they went out and preached that men should repent. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. So, so you see there, they preached that the what? Should come to church? Repent. Men should repent. They, so what? Repent. Men should repent. When you are evangelizing, you must ensure that people what? Repent. They show what? Repent. repent. If they don't repent, that means your evangelist is not complete. Oh, now let me let, let me let me let me withdraw it. Sometimes you may not get somebody to repent. You may start the preaching and somebody will come and finish it someday along the line. Am I communicating? Yes. Yes. I have seen many people. I talked to them five years ago. They never got born again until ten years, five, ten years after. Ah, they are not born again. Somebody has went there and finished the job. So yeah. let's do something about evangelism. Praise the Lord. A little contribution. Yes, ma'am. Um, so um, it's not only that we are you are talking to people or we are talking to people, um, we should also involve fasting and praying for the, for, for the whole world. Fast Amen. and pray. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a voice one day that told me if God will open my eyes and see the way people are going to hell, hmm. that I will fast every day for souls. I will fast every day for souls to go to heaven. So we should really involve fasting and praying in, into yeah. it. Because, you know, it, it needs the grace of God too as you're talking to them. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. See, yeah. mention something. If, like that man that was, 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 in the, was in the air, but he was fasting for a very long time. The woman started crying. Mm -hmm. What is the problem, man? She, the woman started complaining. Say, Sam, I'm sorry, sir, pray for me. I have a problem. I'm committing adultery with my coworker. My husband don't know. Please pray for me. He, she, I have no idea, but something, the Holy Ghost arrested her and she began to confess. Praise the Lord. At the airport, nobody talked with her. So when you are fasting and praying, you carry God's presence. You cause many people to be saved. Because mm -hmm. Look at what I say. Prayerfully identify Same. Satan's devices that keep people what? in bondage. Look around. There are people, they smoke, they drink, they tattoo, they, they don't care. They are educated. I was saying sometime this morning, what makes a doctor, a medical educated doctor, having sex with a dog? Put, put that together. Does that make sense to you? A no. six-figure minded person. What happened? The person is in bondage. It's in bondage, and there are many people, even in church, born again, but they're still involved in all kinds of stuff, homosexuality, and here comes the big one in church now. It's called masturbation. Well, they say we cannot commit fornication, so what? let me do something. I can do it quietly and get released. That is also called sexual perversion. Is Somebody called it outer cause, and it is sin, and it is wrong. Am I right or wrong? Yes. The church is afraid to tell people the truth. We are in the last days. We must tell people the truth. It is only the truth. What happens? Good to hell. No. no. Jesus said, "Is the truth that will what? Set you free. That's that will you make free. you free. If you don't tell them the truth, say, well, you know, I know you're struggling. That's okay. God understand. That is that is a compromising message. Praise the Lord. They will not get born again. They will become hard-hearted sinners. Okay, <clears throat> point number seven. Daily expose the kingdom of darkness to what? The dying world. You see dying that? Amen. Amen. Somebody's watching pornography. What does that mean to you? Demons are entering into you. Am I communicating? Mm -hmm. Yes. Spirits are entering into you. I'm dancing. I'm Well, pastor, you know I'm struggling. The moment you open up to world music, the demons behind the music and the person singing the music, the demons in the person enters you. And now you can't control yourself. You need deliverance all over again. Oh, when I got born again, I have to make very, I don't know about you, me, I was a DJ, I was clubbing and women and drunkenness. I have to cut off and block. You have to take... Let's be fair, all of us struggle with a lot of things. Praise the Lord. And some of us are still struggling with some other things right now. I'm not communicating. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. 
If Jesus Christ comes today, we don't want to miss the rapture. Am I right or wrong? You're right. right. So we have to be frank and say, you know what? I'd rather struggle here and live a holy life and go to heaven than enjoy and don't make heaven. That is a very bad, I don't want to be in that broad way that leads to damnation. I want to be in the narrow way. Let me feel lonely and still make heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Point number eight, bring down what? Evil the altars evil and system that promote what? And Ungodliness. Everywhere in the world, in America, in Michigan, in your house, <laughs> in your city, your workplace, every single day you have to pull down evil altar. Altar of abortion, pull them down. Altar of lesbianism, homosexuality. Altar of gambling. Altar of pornography. Witchcraft. The, uh, that's, what, that's what they call witchcraft. Somebody says she's, um, she's a born again witch. Have you ever heard that before? A born again witch? No. Oh, yes. She says a born again witch. Witchcraft is an art just like yoga. Let me ask a question Is yoga good or bad? Here comes a controversial question. Is yoga good or bad? It's not Christianly. Who can tell me where yoga come from? From uh, India. India. China. Come from India, okay. And China. China. It comes, the original point of, of, of yoga is from China. And they do that when they, they're in their temple. You go there and you say, mm, and you are, you, are, you are meditating until your spirit leaves your body. It sounds like it can cut though. Yes, of course, you're right. They're in the same category. You're right, man. And you leave your body and float. It's your spirit leave and, and leave. And when you're leaving, they don't even know. Demons have taken over. Now they bring yoga into the schools, into psychology. I did part of psychology. I only write to pass the exam. It's in psychology. They put yoga in it. Meditation is there. It's demonic. It's part of the, of the occult kingdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to pull down these altars. I was looking today and I saw a very bad information, which is so bad, that over 80% of the president in Africa are in occult and they're in what is called Illuminati. They're in Freemason. 80 plus percent of the politicians in America are also part of Freemason and Illuminati. Where that Democrat or Republican, they're in it. <clears throat> they are in it and Christian does fall for anything we got to be careful we must pull down the evil altars the witchcraft in the White House in the Congress Ooh. media witchcraft in CNN MSNBC Fox all of this channel they are all many present, uh, correspondent and broadcaster are working as agents of darkness to brainwash people and destroy and to Kill revival. And unfortunately, a lot of preachers are also in Freemason. They go to underworld for popularity, for power, where they say something nobody can. And they use the Bible to twist people behind the back. And people will say, yes, it's my pastor. But you know the Bible said this, but well, the pastor said it. So the pastor becomes more superior to the Bible. This is witchcraft. And as a matter of, let me say this, every church struggle with witchcraft today. I'm not communicating. Because people, the Holy Ghost has left so many churches and we have neglected evangelism. We need to go back and pull down altars in America, in our areas, in our workplace, in our families, so we can win souls for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Point number nine. It says what? Snatch people, people from what? From darkness every, every day. day. Let's go to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1 and verse 23. The book of Jude. Jude, Jude 1 and 23. What does it say? Well, I want to read Jude 1 23, sir. Israel. I think you know who is doing this. Come on. Yeah. Let's see. 
Jude 1.23. Jude, Jude 1.23, go ahead. He said, and Jude. others save with fear, uh -huh. pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Jude is saying by the Holy Ghost, we, we have to snatch people out of the fire. Amen. Many Amen. of them Amen. are in Hollywood. Are you, are you, can, you, can you hear me? Okay. Many of them are in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Many of them are on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Fox, all this channel, working consistently for the devil, brainwashing people with evil. Many of them are in the pulpit. Many of them are in churches working for the devil. We need to snatch people out of the fire by prayer and by evangelism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All of us must play our part. Too many people are going to darkness. Eyes wide open. Christians are getting colder every day. The level of backsliding is too high. God, mm -hmm. our prayer and evangelism will bring revival. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Look at point number 11. Number 10, sorry. Demonstrate, Demonstrate the power of God. What? The power of God in, in the, the lives of the lives unsaved. Of the unsaved Let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Acts 10, 38. Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with, uh -huh. the, with the Holy Spirit and power. Okay. And how he went around doing good and healing. Hallelujah. Um, healing all who were under the power mm -hmm. of the devil because God was with him. So you see there, let me say the one thing. If God is with you, you have the ability to make a difference in somebody's life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, all of us, keep this in mind. As I live a holy life, the Holy Ghost will not leave me. If I stick to, holy, to sin, the Holy Ghost is going to warn me and warn me and say, you know why you're not serious. I'm gone. I'm out of here. You're too filthy. So our main passion is to live a holy life, but now begin to understand that we must demonstrate the power of God. Do you know many people, they only get born again when they say the power of God in action? Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Imagine somebody dying in the hospital, a dyad, any Muslim, and Kankar, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Scientology, Baha'i, any religion. And you heard and you prayed and the person come to life. Do you know somebody who said, hmm, this is your religion. I need, to, I need to know more about your religion. For somebody to die and come back to life, your religion is serious. Or maybe normal. Pray for somebody about something they believe in God for. I met a guy in a, um, in a, in a mechanic place. He's a Muslim. I just share something simple to him. I was shocked. The guy said, you know what, sir? I believe what you're saying. Can you pray for me, please? Mm -hmm. After leading into the Lord, he says, sir, where are you going? I said, I want to go to church, but I'll come. I said, no, leave your car. I will drop you to your church. Praise the Lord. He dropped me to the church. He says, you know what? Do me, do me a favor. Can I get an envelope for me? I said, what? I want to put some offering and put it in the mailbox. In this, <laughs> I can't believe. He was, I said, immediately, genuine encounter. You can see the guy. He came and knelt down and put the box on the box. A dyed Muslim and shifted in one, in few minutes. We need to do power evangelism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Amen. people see the power of God at work in your house, in your surrounding, mm -hmm. anywhere you go, they, they will get saved. We need to step out. Last point for the day. Set on fire the atmosphere with God's power and ever last, ever increasing revival. What am I trying to say in that? Every single day, command the fire of God to increase in your house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Command the fire of God to increase in your workplace, around your children, in their mind, in their emotion. Command the power of God to feel in your car. <coughs> so when somebody come enter your car, they will know they've entered someplace different. 
surround your compound. Those going to the mall, when you enter the mall, those understand power as well, you must carry power to the mall. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Hallelujah. When you go to the hospital, anywhere you go, the power of God must be the people must know light comes. When light comes, darkness could not comprehend it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Genesis mm -hmm. 1. It says, in the beginning, God created, and God said, let there be light, and there was what? Darkness? Light. 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 There, was light. <laughs> there was light. So then we must carry God's power. The unbeliever must know you have something oh. I need. I was praying one of these days. I normally pray before coming to John. I have to pray for one hour before coming to even to share to all of you. And the man said, please come. Can you come and pray for me, please? <laughs> I asked him to pray for him. Power will compel somebody that you are different from them. They need the God you have. It takes power evangelism or evangelism by fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Questions, contribution before we pray. <laughs> Any question, please? Any contribution? Or anything you want to clarify? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to remind all of us by the special grace of God, we can do all things through Christ which strengthen us. Amen. Amen. The fire of God is in you. Let's fan the fire and rise up and begin to do exploit and depopulate hell anywhere we go because we are here for a very short while. Even if you live 150, it's still short. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's make a difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, wherever you are, please begin to thank. We're going to thank God for this time of the world. Let's begin to pray, Father. We want to thank you for this time of the world. We appreciate you. Somebody begin to pray, please. Yes, you can pray, please. Come on, let's do that. Father, we thank you for another time, another time together of the world. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for another time of the world. Pray in your house. Pray wherever you are. Pray. Pray something. Pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we appreciate you. All of you by the website, by Zoom, by Facebook. By you too, they're gonna to pray. Father, we thank you for the word. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you once again for teaching us tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for ministry for opening our eyes to the world. We are forever grateful to you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I don't know about Amen. you. I just share something about the Holy Ghost to me and you. There are many people who have gone to hell because of me, because of you. They pass by you in the mall, you said nothing. They pass by you in the shopping mall, you said nothing. At work, you said nothing. In the house, you said nothing. Now, your life also has never said anything good to them. One of Christ said, Father, Lord, peradventure, people have gone to hell because of me. Have mercy on me. Let's begin to pray. My I father, my father. Peradventure, many people have gone to hell because of me. I did not preach to them. I was not nice to them. I misbehaved. I treated them very badly. I was arrogant. I was proud. I was I act like I'm the only, only one in town. I become very arrogant. I did not have time. I misbehaved. 
the man that was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, remember in the Bible, he was caught, he was beaten, half dead, the, the Pharisee came. And the priest, the Levite came. They did not help until the good Samaritan who is not born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many, many women. Let me say, I'm on the line women straight away who are married. They say, I would rather marry an unbeliever than marry a bunch of believers who are not serious. Am I communicating? Yes. There are many Christians who are born again, but they are not serious. I want to cry to God, say, Father, any way, anyhow, I have becoming over religious and sanctimonious, and my Christianity have put people off from coming to going to heaven. Have mercy, change me to be broken and to be humble. Let's begin to pray. My Father, make me to be broken and to be humble. Lord, I cry to you, my sanctimonious over spirituality. Like I'm the only one that knows the Bible more than every other person. Have mercy on me. Help me to be humble, to be broken, so you can use me to evangelize and win souls for you. Somebody cry to God wherever you are, please don't stop praying. You're going to pray. I want you to pray. Talk to him about it. Help me, Father, to be humble, to be broken, best so you can use to win souls for you. In the name that is above every other name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty yeah, Jesus. name, we pray. Amen. I want you to pray once again. Let, please, please pray this prayer. Somebody said to me, I'm not coming to that church or that place. The person in the choir is my girlfriend. I say, you're not, you're not serious. I say, yes, it's my girlfriend. Uh, it's my girlfriend. And the choir. That other person in the prayer team is my boy. I mean, in other words, I want us to come because sometimes... Your sin is causing somebody not to be born again. Hallelujah. Mm. Gossiping at work is causing somebody not to be born again because you're encouraging somebody to be a gossiper. Want to say, Father, every sin in me that makes somebody not to be born again, let it be destroyed by fire. Let's begin to pray. My Father, my Father, okay. in the every name of Jesus, every sin that? in me that makes me not to become completely infested. I am causing people not to be born again because my life, a double life I'm living, let me my life be destroyed. Somebody cry to God, let sin in my life be destroyed. Pray about it. You go to the place, say something, say something, say something, say something. Every sin in my life that make my life to become disadvantageous, putting people, making them comfortable in their sin or making them walk away from the, from the church, from being born again. Father, deliver me in the name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I want you to pray tonight. Listen to me. God wants us to be interceding for unbelievers. Hebrews 7, 27. Jesus ever lived to make intercession. He's always praying. As I'm talking right now, he's praying none. So that's why if I don't live a holy life, I can't talk to him judgment day. He says, you crazy. I was praying you were shacking up and drinking and committing adultery. You crazy. Don't talk to me. Throw this joker out there. I want to pray, say, Father, help me to pray for unbelievers. Give me the passion to pray for souls to be born again everywhere, especially in America, in Michigan. Let's begin to pray, Father. In the name of Jesus, give me, empower me, give me fire. Passion to pray for unbelievers. Strong desire to pray. Prayer, the mantle, the passion to pray. My Father, my Father, in the name that is above every other name. I pray for the supernatural invitation of fire to pray. Let me pray for unbelievers. Men ought always to pray. My Lord, my God, my Lord, help me to pray to intercede for lost souls everywhere in Michigan, in America, and the rest of the world. Give me a passion to pray. Man, 
Let me become men of the world. You see, Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 6 and 7. You have said, Watch men upon the world that will neither give no rest, no sleep until they see. Reviver, Lord, give unto me a mantle. Greater man to than Elijah, greater man to intercession than Elisha, greater man to Malika Tayade, make me a consistent non-stop intercessor, spiritual warfare, mantle of mantle of prayer. Make me a watchman upon the wall that will rise up to pray at any time concerning souls. Concerning revival, in the name that is above every other name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I want you to pray once again right now and cry to God. Say, Father, all of those who are not born again in America, wherever they are, the president, all the cabinet, all the House of Reps, the Senate, the, the Supreme Court, all of them, the governors, mayors, even pastors. There was a bishop who was a bishop for 40 years. When mm -hmm. the bishop retired, that is when he got born again. Question number one, for 40 years, what were you preaching about? He got born again after 40 years of ministry. This is crazy. Can you imagine? He was talking about David and Goliath, uh, Jonah and the fish belly with absolutely no Holy Ghost. You want to say, Father, everyone that is not born again in the world, not in the world, in America, anywhere, especially your family, pray for their salvation. Let's begin to pray. My Father, my Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone in my family from today, you shall not see sin anymore. I snatch you from darkness to light. Everyone in America. I command by the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone in America, wherever you are, I snatch you from darkness to light. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, I snatch you. I snatch the president, the vice, the cabinet, the senate. House of Reps, the Supreme Court, everyone, the celebrity, Hollywood, all those working in the media, the press, all the governors, the mayors, the law, everyone, all the preachers who are not born again, all those who are in darkness, in bondage, in false religion, I snatch them, I pray for their salvation, I destroy the yoke of sin, break the chain of the devil, the veil that makes them to become comfortable sin, catch fire. I demand their liberty and their freedom wherever they are. I command the Holy Ghost fire to locate them. Those who are promoting the devil in America, I command, let the eyes open. Let them have an encounter by dream, by vision, by incidents, by accident, by coincidence, any kind of, of activity. I call them for a snatch them. All all those in witchcraft, all those in Hollywood, all those in Oakwood, the water, the marine, all gays, all lesbian, all in abortion, all in adultery, pornography, pedophile, all bestiality, all in all kind of sexual perversion. I snatch them from darkness to light. I pull them out. I pray the Holy Ghost encounter them by fire. From today, anyone in my family, Holy Ghost fire, arrest them, arrest them. I command them, you will not have peace having living in sin. From today, sin becomes bitter on like fire and pepper to your mouth. I command visitation by the Holy Ghost. Everyone in Cornerstone that is not born again, you we command the Holy Ghost fire to encounter them. May they never be the same. In the name that is above every other name, let the Holy Ghost fire arrest everyone. We claim their salvation in Michigan, in Detroit, in every location, in Westland, in my in this complex. I command souls to be saved. The name that is above every other name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. I want you to pray once again. Let's deal with coronavirus right now. The altar that makes coronavirus irreversible.
They say, oh, coronavirus come to stay. He is not going to stay. He is an illegal American citizen. He has no powers to stay here. We are deporting him back to center. Command altars to collapse. Command the blood and the fire. Arrest and send him back to center. Let's begin to pray. My father, my father, altars behind coronavirus. We dismantle you, we pull you down. Altars that says coronavirus, you have come to say it. We dismantle you, pull you down. Evil pronouncement by the president, by the cabinet, by the congress, by CDC, by experts, WHO, foreign government, leaders. Etc. We renounce the evil pronouncement that corn have come to stay. I reverse, I overturn, I override, I overrule. By the blood of Jesus, Corona, I erase, I eliminate, I bring you down to zero. And I command you back to sender, back to sender by the Spirit of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, whatsoever we bind or not shall be bound in heaven. We disallow you. You are not an, you are an illegal immigrant in America. Coronavirus, we command you back to sender. We cripple you. We eliminate you. We terminate your tenancy. You are, we eject you permanently by blood, by fire, and by the wild wind of Halloween. We command you to be blown away. The same way you came, the same way you go now. I command your tenancy expire, your visit expire. We deport you back to center. In the name of Jesus, we come against you. We cripple you. We silence you. We declare you speaking too loud in the mind of people, into the media, the press, even the church. We paralyze you, we silence you in the name of Jesus to steal the enemy and the avenger. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to pray right now, wherever you are. Thank God you are still alive. You want to pray, Father. All those infected by coronavirus, wherever they are in America, in Michigan, in Detroit, or wherever you are, command divine vaccine, divine medication to locate them. Say, finger of God, locate them, let them heal. Somebody begin to travel. My Father, my Father. Everyone sick of coronavirus anywhere in America, anywhere in Michigan and Detroit, in Westland, anywhere any member is leaving their family far and near by the blood and by the divine vaccine, divine medication. We command them to be healed. I send angels of ministry angels. I command divine, divine, divine intervention. Finger of God, locate them, locate them. Finger of God, locate them. Finger, I command divine vaccine, divine medication. Let them be healed wherever they are located in the world. In America, in Michigan, in Detroit, in Westland. Wherever any member are or their families, let them be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let them be healed in the name of Jesus. Let them be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who have been declared to die in hospital, in quarantine centers, in nursing homes, in group homes. Those hiding in the homes, dying slowly by the power of the Holy Ghost, we command them to be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command them to be healed by the supreme power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want, I want you to pray this dangerous prayer. Pray for you and your family and the classic father. 
I command divine vaccine into my body, my family, medication. Lord, I will not be infected. And in case I pass by anything that will cause me, Lord, let corona die. Command Holy Ghost fire to surround you 24-7, night, day, anywhere you go. Complete, declare divine escape, divine immunity. Somebody begin to travel, my father. I declare all my life and my family. Every member in corners of the life and the family, those in town, in Michigan, out of Michigan, out in America, out of America, I command divine vaccine, divine medication, divine immunity, divine escape, divine exemption, divine protection, divine inoculation. I command my body to receive life. Every infection, whatever is in my body, known and unknown, die from the roots. And everyone in my family, die from the roots. I command every member, every infirmity in their bodies dive from the roots. I disinfect the air we breathe. I anything we touch, wherever we go, I command divine protection. Surround ourselves with the Holy Ghost fire. Fire wall 24-7 around every church member. Everyone in my family, wherever they are located in America, out of America, let them be go to everyone, wherever you are. Fire wall, divine protection from coronavirus. No way Weapon of coronavirus shall prosper. Psalm 91 must be ready. No evil shall befall you. Neither any black corona come and roll in. In the name of the Lord. Makala ba shataya dele kalaba. In the name of in Psalm 91 must be said, surely. It will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of coronavirus. I declare to you, Makada Bayani, safety, security, divine protection, divine immunity, divine protection. I command firewall around us, around our family, in Cornerstone on Sundays. Nobody will ever be infected. And other churches too on Sunday, they will not be infected. In the name of Jesus. We shall don't all to stand, we shall stand by the Spirit of God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray once again and declare every evil agenda of the devil for you and your family from now to the end of the year. Terminate them and cancel them. Somebody pray, Father. Every evil agenda now to the end of the year concerning me and my family evil agenda or agendas I cancel them in the name of Jesus every evil intention evil intention of the devil concerning us my family anyone in my family bad evil intention from now to the end of the year I cancel in the name of Jesus I terminate the agenda time, sensitive agenda, demonic harassment, satanic attacks, demonic concentration, virus from the underworld, command you deflect back, boomerang back to send up over everyone in the church. As a Satan, the blood is available, the Lord rebuke you. I command my health to be completely safe. Safety is my portion, my family, safety over cornerstone, over the family, father near. I declare safety at work, safety wherever they go in school, anywhere they go, the hand of God shall keep up preserved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to pray once again and travel. Let's just so one see to the prayer for the country. This is election period. It is less than a month or an and a half ago. I want to start. I said it early on, children of God, we are we, we should, should we should be on the Lord's side. Yes. We should be on the Lord's side. It's not about being Democrat or Republican. We are the we are the redeemed of the Lord. We want to say, Father, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, I think 34 it says, righteous and exalted nation, but sin is a disgrace. In other words, Anything that is ungodly, God does not approve it. He does not, he, do, he shares glory with the devil. Once a father in this election, 
let godliness, righteousness, godly value, moral value reign supreme in the mind of every American that God, America will not go into darkness. Father, choose godly leaders for America. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Let righteousness reign. Let godly values, godliness take over America, the mind of every American. Bring them to soberness. Every deception, every manipulation, every brainwashing, receive fire. We call every American to divine order, divine alignment, to vote with the fear of God, with godliness in right. In, 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 as, as number one criteria, righteousness that America will head closer to you, not far away from you. We bless your name, we give you the praise, and we give you the glory, Father. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen. I want to pray for yourself, say, Father, before the end of September. Remember me for good. Let somebody pray, Father, before September ends. Remember me for good. Cry to him. Come and pray. You're going to pray before September ends. Remember me for good. In the mighty name of Jesus, before September ends, remember me for good. Somebody cry to God. Before September ends, remember me for good. Makalabashata, before September ends, remember me for good. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Before I pray, I want to remind all of us this, this Friday, 9 o'clock is our night vigil. Please remind others, make time, tell others, even invite outsiders. Praise the Lord. Number two, let us invite this coming Sunday. At least two people we are meeting physical in the church. Encourage others to come to the church building. We are safe. Everything is in place. Number three, if you want to be a blessing to the church by Zell, cash up. Please be a blessing. The church needs finances for the work of the Lord, not for anyone's personal interest. Let's be a blessing and let's move evangelism forward by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Daddy, please pray for us and send us home, home, sir. Father, we thank you for another privilege Amen. to talk about what is the heartbeat, with what is your heartbeat. Hallelujah. That is evangelism. You do not want anybody to perish. You want everybody to come into repentance. Amen. Whatever is disturbing us, whatever the obstacle the enemy has put in our way, we come against it. We come against the influence of the enemy in our life. Amen. Give us the, the zeal to want to save life. Give us the zeal to evangelize. Amen. We pray that you... Yeah. You make us to do it. Holy Spirit, Amen. help us. We cannot help ourselves. We pray as we hear the word, we will not be hearer of the word alone. We will be the doer of the word. Amen. Thank you. We thank Amen. you for your servant that you have used. We pray that you replenish him. Your name Whatever Jesus. virtue must have come out of him, you replace it in Jesus' name. And he will not do this job in vain. Amen. And I, I pray that we crown all his effort with success. Amen. And also he will be among those who will be ready for rapture when Jesus Christ comes. Amen. I pray the same prayer for each and every one of us. We pray that we will not be among those who are left behind. Hallelujah. We will with Christ when he comes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We commit the rest of the night into your hand. And I will pray that you wash over us, keep us, keep our family. Thank you for what you have been doing. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace. In the grace of our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And, and the love of God. The sweet flesh of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall be with us all the days of our life.
Oh, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Thanks for calling in. Have a blessed day. You too.